Okay, everyone, uh, welcome to another uh, exciting installment of the SEEP Avian Training video series. I'm DJ McNeil, graduate student at Cornell University, uh, the instructor for this uh, online course uh, uh, video, uh, as well as one of the SEEP crew leaders. Uh, remember, if you have any questions about anything in this video or anything related to the SEAP project, please uh, send me an email. Uh, if you're watching this video, you more than likely already have my email. Uh, and I would also like to remind you that the SEAP avian training video series should be viewed as a supplement to your, uh, your already instated uh, avian study session. So this should not be the sole uh, source of avian identification uh, preparation that you use for the upcoming field season. Uh, this video is, as you can tell, about the warblers, the birds in the family Perulidae, uh, and they tend to be a very fun group. Uh, the biggest challenge with the Perulids is that there are many different species, um, and we'll cover uh, probably close to 40 today. Um, I'm not actually sure how many are in here. Uh, but we've got a lot of warblers to cover. Fortunately, many of them are very colorful and uh, pretty pretty easy to identify. Uh, perhaps the biggest challenge will come from um, identifying them by song. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, let's talk about warblers. Okay, the way that I have this uh, presentation split up is into general groups of warblers by uh, different color scheme. <clears throat> The first uh, color group that we're going to talk about today are the winged warblers, those in the genus Vermivora. Now, although the two sort of pictures that I have here are a yellow bird and a gray bird uh, seem quite different, these two species are very closely related uh, and interbreed freely, uh, so these two kind of constitute their own group. They're also the primary focus of our songbird surveys and therefore deserve special attention. Okay, so the golden wing. Uh, the golden-winged warbler is the focus of this study uh, by and large. Uh, the species, as you know, has been experiencing rapid population declines across its uh, breeding range, uh, driven by a variety of factors, uh, one of which is breeding season habitat loss. The golden wing, uh, fortunately for us, is a very easy species to identify. Um, <clears throat> we can see here that the bird is primarily gray overall. Uh, the mantle is gray, the flanks are a light gray, the tail is gray, the, the the flight feathers are gray, um, but it has a, a, a collection of characteristics that make it distinctive. So looking at uh, the male here on the left, we've also got the female on the right, but let's focus on this guy. We see that we've got this black throat patch, which is very distinctive, and this black kind of uh, robber type mask here, like a raccoon. So these two black facial markings, coupled with a, a yellow crown and a yellow wing patch, make the species very distinctive. We also have a white malar and a white supercilium here. Um, and with these things taken kind of as a whole, uh, they make the golden wing warbler a very easily identified species. In fact, the female golden wing warbler consists of the same traits uh, as the male. However, this black throat and the black mask are a, a gray color on the female. So they blend in more with the body. But we still have the, the kind of yellow cap the, uh, the yellow wing bars forming this, this wing panel here, uh, a gray body color overall uh, with the white supercilium and white malar patch make the species uh, pretty easy to ID. It's probably also worth noting uh, throughout this entire presentation that in general female birds of any sort, but warblers in particular, are not commonly encountered. The other thing to note about uh, identifying the golden wing warbler based on plumage is when the species flies, it often shows these white edges on the tail feathers. Now, many species of birds that we'll talk about today have that, but the golden wing, it's quite prominent and, and important to note. Um, there is more white as the bird gets older, uh, but even younger, uh, second year birds will have this, uh, this white on the tail. Okay, let's talk about the vocalizations produced by the golden wing warbler. Uh, we touch on this actually also a little bit in the sparrows video because the golden wing warbler's uh, primary song can sound quite similar to the clay-colored sparrow. But the song is a, a series of high-pitched buzzes, usually thought of as saying, be buzz, buzz, buzz. Now note that the number of buzzes is variable. Sometimes it's just one or two, uh, sometimes it's more. Here's an example of a golden wing warbler singing the, the be buzz, buzz type song.
Now note that the B buzz buzz is typically called the type one song. In fact, that's what we'll call it for the purposes of the C project, the type one, that B buzz buzz. But also note that the Goldwing Warbler uh, can also produce a type two song, which while also a series of high pitched buzzes is much more variable and has less structure. Here's an example of a type two Goldwing Warbler song. You can hear that there are several buzzes and it still has the high pitched quality of the Goldwing Type 1 song, but this, this buzzy set of calls is, is not, it doesn't have the clear structure that the, the Type 1 has. Um, nonetheless, it's important for us to recognize that this is a Golden Winged Warbler producing a, a Type 2 song. So the Type 1 again, and a Type 2. And again, as I just said, the type two is quite variable. So <clears throat> here's a, another example of a different type two. And another. And another. Now, taken together, the Type 2 tends to be quite a bit less common than the Type 1. The Type 1 song is produced maybe 80 or 90% of the time, while the Type 2 is quite a bit less common. Most of the time, what you'll hear is the Type 1. <clears throat> Although you won't hear it often, it's also important to note the chip note of the Golden Wing. Many songbirds produce a chip note, many warblers do, but the golden wing is pretty distinctive. And the thing that makes the golden wing chip note distinctive uh, from the other birds is it tends to be softer and, and, and quieter. It's a soft tip, a little tip. And the, the field sparrow produces a very similar call, and they can be quite difficult to discern. But here's uh, the golden wing chip note. Okay, moving along. The blue-winged warbler is probably the second most important uh, species that we identify with this project. Uh, it looks quite different in many ways from the golden-winged warbler. Uh, for one, the general body color of both the male and the female, which is here, male on the left, is uh, obviously yellow. The back tends to have this greenish kind of color to it, but several things remain the same. For one, the wing is predominantly gray, just like the golden wing, as is the tail. The undertail coverts are white, just like on the golden wing, and we've got a, a wing bars of some color, just like on the golden wing. Uh, as the name implies, the golden wing has uh, yellow or golden wing bars here, where the blue wing has white wing bars. <clears throat> um, the species a base body color, this yellow on this guy, uh, is one of the Mendelian traits that we'll discuss as the species produces uh, hybrids. Because the blue winged warbler uh, and the golden winged warbler can reproduce together and produce totally fertile hybrids. Notice another key difference. The face is entirely yellow, whereas the golden wing has that, that gray base face color with a white supercilium and white malar. This guy has this, this yellow base to the throat, and the mask is restricted really basically to the lores here. The golden wing mask extends far uh, more out and essentially creates this, this mask through the auricular region. We also see that the throat uh, here is yellow, which is the same base color as, uh, as the, the bird's contour plumage. Um, so we've got a, a yellow bird here that's got a similar wing to a golden wing, but instead of yellow, it's predominantly white. Um, but otherwise, in some ways, structurally very similar. Also notice the beak, which I didn't mention much on the golden wing. It's very uh, acute tipped. It's very, very pointed at the tip. It's not very blunt. Uh, it's quite sharp. And uh, this is a very distinctive thing about a handful of warblers, um, all of the vermivora, uh, as well as a few species that were formerly considered vermivora. Also notice the female blue wing warbler <clears throat> looks just like the male in many ways, except her colors tend to be more muted. Uh, the bright uh, yellow on the face is more a much duller color on the female. The black, uh, very small mask is actually a dark gray mask on the female. Um, and in general, she just looks greener. The song 
is uh, <clears throat> not terribly difficult to learn. Uh, it's high-pitched buzzes, just like the golden wing. Uh, however, it's produced in uh, a two notes, pretty much, uh, as the, the standard type one. So it, it's a, a, bzz, bzz, a higher pitch note followed by a lower pitch note. Also note, so that's the, the blue wing type 1. Also note that that's, this species can produce a type 2 as well, and there's no way to discern a type 2 between a golden wing warbler and a blue wing warbler. So here are some examples of blue wing warbler type 2. And another. And here's an example of a blue wing warbler that's maybe producing a type 2, or maybe it's just an atypical type song. Also important to note, the blue wing warbler uh, alarm chip is exactly the same as the golden wing warbler for our purposes. Uh, there might be subtle differences, but there, there's really no what, good way to tell them apart. Okay, so here's where things get a little bit tricky. When a golden wing warbler and a blue wing warbler uh, produce offspring together, the first generation of young, the F1, are generally uh, look something like this. This is what we call the Brewster's warbler. And although it has a, its own special name, the Brewster's warbler is actually just a, a direct hybrid between a golden wing and a blue wing. Uh, the Brewster's Warbler tends to have uh, the yellow crown, just like both Blue Wing and Golden Wing. It has the base body color, for the most part, of the Golden Wing, uh, except it has the facial pattern, that is a very small eye line and no black on the throat, of the Blue Winged Warbler. Uh, consequently, uh, uh, as a result of their first uh, generation of hybridizing, the, the two species often produce young that have a yellow blush to the throat. Uh, an interesting thing, uh, a consequence essentially of this, this pairing, is the blue, Brewster's Warbler tends to have lowered uh, reproductive fitness than the, the uh, well, than either parental species. For example, the Brewster's Warbler has a different colored throat than either the Blue Winged or the Golden Winged Warbler, uh, probably lending itself to being less attractive to uh, prospective mates. Also notice the wing bars uh, on this particular individual, and, and note there's a lot of variation. This particular guy uh, has sort of a creamy yellow colored wing bar, intermediate between a blue wing or a golden wing. Uh, some things to note, however, uh, there's a lot of variation in Brewster's warblers. This bird here shows a, a much more extensive yellow down into the belly and even into the throat and the face a little bit. Here's another bird showing a different pattern. Uh, it has a clean white breast, no yellow to the, the throat and uh, are yellow to the breast. We also see this face mask kind of extending down a little. The wing bars are much brighter yellow, so this bird likely has uh, uh, a father maybe that looked like this and intergress DNA back in with um, the, the golden wing. So as for the vocalizations produced by Brewsters uh, and the other hybrid we're gonna talk about, they produce either the golden winged warbler type one song the Blue Winged Warbler Type 1 song, or one of the many Type 2 songs. In fact, thinking about all this, the Golden Winged Warbler and the Blue Winged Warbler can sing the song of either species. And because we've got Golden Winged Warbler, Blue Winged Warbler, Brewster's Warbler, and the Lawrence's Warbler, which we're going to talk about, for the purposes of this project, we ask that you look to attempt to find every vermivora that you hear singing and visually confirm the phenotype. So the final hybrid we're going to talk about here is the Lawrence's Warbler. <clears throat> and many consider it to be uh, the most beautiful of the hybrids. Uh, it, it has that rich yellow of the Blue Winged Warbler, kind of as the overall body plumage color, uh, with the, the beautiful face, facial markings of the, the Golden Wing. 
Uh, just like the Brewster's warbler, the Lawrence's warbler can produce uh, vocalizations of either parental type or the type twos of, uh, of either. Um, so song doesn't help you with the identification of this guy here. Also note the female. The female, uh, just like with all Vermivora, is a, a replica of the male with muted colors. So she's a, a yellow bird, uh, but she's got kind of a gray face mask, um, which is really just the, the kind of... Uh, muted version of this guy. One difference that she has is this particular individual has these uh, whitish wing bars. This guy has yellow wing bars. Um, I think a true Lawrence's typically has white wing bars like a blue wing. But note that here are some examples of non-Lawrence's. Uh, these are golden wing warblers. Uh, probably have some, some blue wing DNA in their history, but they're golden wing warblers. So when I actually googled Lawrence's warblers, these two pictures popped up. Uh, and the photographers or the birders thought that they were Lawrence's females. So what we have here is some yellow to the breast and a very greenish uh, kind of nape area, greenish mantle. Um, this is a golden winged warbler. You can see the belly is white. Uh, the breast is predominantly white. It's got this, uh, this very bright white malar, a white supercilium. Um, and that's in contrast to the Lawrence's female, which has yellow for those things. And here's another example, the same thing. We've got this white malar, this white supercilium, and this gray body color. And although it's got some yellow, uh, this is a golden winged warbler uh, female. If this bird were encountered in the field, it's probably worth putting in the notes that it's likely uh, intergressed with a hybrid DNA. But uh, this is what we would call a golden wing. This is what we would call a Lawrence's. Okay, we've been talking for like 15 minutes about vermivora. Uh, and this is the, I've got two more slides here to talk about. So just to give you an idea of how hybridization works with this, we've got the golden wing, which is the one parental phenotype, the blue wing, which is the other parental phenotype. Here are those two phenotypes shown on this graph, and we can produce a wide range of hybrids. These two you might call Lawrence's, and uh, perhaps these two you'd call Brewster's. Um, this is the typical F1 Brewster. You put these two birds together, a male of one and a female of the other, and you get this guy. Um, but when this guy interbreeds with either of these, later in the, uh, the genetic history, you can get this whole range of hybrids. So just note that. Um, and I think we talked about this uh, for the most part, but it's kind of helpful to see the sonograms of the golden wing and the blue wing. Uh, the golden wing has that typical bee buzz buzz. Oop. A bee buzz buzz buzz. The blue wing warbler, this guy here, has kind of this like bzz, bzz. And take a look at the sonogram. So here we've got a, a type 2 of either a golden wing or a blue wing. It's, it's very hard to tell without actually seeing the bird. And we've got several trills kind of going together. And each trill maybe has characteristics of the golden wing or the blue wing. It's not really clear what's going on there. Here's a, another type of type 2. You can see it's quite complex. This one seems to have four parts to it. We've got this down slurred note here, this two trills, and then a lower trill at the end. Um, often a bird will singing type 2 will sing, like pick this really unusual random song and keep repeating it over and over just like it were a, a typical song. Uh, and that's the only thing that, that I'll, I'll say about vermifera. Okay, so the next group of birds uh, moving out of the world of vermifera are the brown warblers. Uh, these ones are actually not too bad, a pretty fun group of birds. Okay, the first bird that we have on our brown warblers list is a beautiful uh, worm-eating warbler. This species is pretty much not found in our Great Lakes sites and only found in our southern Appalachian sites near Maryland and, uh, and southern Pennsylvania. Uh, the worm-eating warbler is pretty easy to identify. It's got this very like beautiful uh, caramel-colored head and breast, uh, complete with this, this black cap that has an orange stripe through it and, uh, and a black uh, eye stripe. We've got kind of this olive colored back to the bird, uh, bright yellow legs, and pretty yellowish colored uh, bill. Very uh, distinctive bird. Male and female looks exactly the same. <clears throat> and the song is a rapid dry trill, very similar to the chipping sparrow. Here's another.
One thing to notice here is that the chipping sparrow tends to hang out in open, uh, grassy habitats, uh, kind of similar to what you might think of in a park. The worm-eating warbler prefers mature forest. Uh, that is often the thing that helps you discern between the chipping sparrow and the worm-eating warbler. The next bird on our brown birds list is the Louisiana water thrush. <clears throat> Now we have two water thrushes we'll discuss, the Louisiana and the, uh, the Northern, and they're pretty, pretty easy to tell apart, uh, <clears throat> at least once you have a trained eye. Both of these birds, although they're called water thrushes, um, they aren't actually thrushes, but they do hang out near water. They're pretty large warblers. Um, perhaps that's where the name comes from. They do have somewhat of a thrush-like appearance. And both uh, the Northern and the Louisiana have this kind of dark brown back, this light-colored belly with uh, streaking and uh, uh, light supercilium and lighter colored malar and throat. Um, one thing to, that's distinctive about the Louisiana, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is the supercilium uh, as compared to the northern. So we see on the, the Louisiana water thrush a very white supercilium on both individuals, particularly uh, making note of how wide this supercilium is. Very white, wide supercilium and a very nice, clean white throat. These will be uh, contrasting with the northern water thrush, which has kind of a yellow-colored supercilium, and the throat has uh, speckles pretty much throughout it. The way that I like to think about these is that the Louisiana water thrush is a species of clean, fast-moving streams. Such streams tend to have very uh, high-quality water in them, uh, the, the streams where you might want to drink. And because these streams are so clean and clear, uh, I like to think that the, the water thrush, the Louisiana water thrush, has nice clean plumage because of that. Um, the song is also not terribly difficult to, uh, to remember. It's a series of clear introductory notes with a musical uh, tumble. Almost like the bird is saying, cheer, 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 what about you? And here's a different individual. Here, in contrast, is the northern water thrush. <clears throat> the northern water thrush uh, is a bird that hangs out in stagnant, uh, still moving water in these swamps. So these guys like to hang out in very uh, mature hardwood swamps and places like that. Uh, here's a nice example. He's in some sort of muddy, gross uh, uh, habitat. And maybe think of this, this muddy, gross habitat. If there's some standing water in there, you're probably not going to want to drink it because it's pretty dirty. And because this guy hangs out in, in areas with maybe sort of dirty water, as we're going to think of it for the purposes of identification, he has a dirtier look to him. We have a speckled throat, unlike our Louisiana water thrush, which was nice and white, and a, a creamy, kind of tan-colored supercilium, unlike the Louisiana. The song is also very different between the Louisiana and the northern water thrush. Uh, the way that I learned it was spit, spit, chew, chew, swallow, swallow. But notice that it has uh, generally three distinct uh, pieces to the song, three distinct sections. It also tends to have a very snappy quality to it. Okay, the final uh, of the small brown warblers that we're going to talk about is the oven bird. And this guy is one of the most common uh, brown warblers that we see in our study area. The oven bird has this kind of brownish olive back, um, a, a nice clean white breast, which has a series of speckles across the breast that almost tend to form streaks. Um, the throat tends to be clear with the exception of the uh, a white uh, malar stripe bordered by a little black stripe. The species is a complete white eye ring and also distinctive is, is this uh, rufous orange cap with a black border. The oven bird is, is quite a bit bigger than most warblers, um, and it has a very distinctive song. 
uh, you can come up with whatever mnemonic you want. The one that I learned was teacher, 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 teacher. Here's another bird. Okay, a quick review of our little brown warblers. <clears throat> we have the oven bird, which has this white eye ring, a brown overall color, the black streaking, which almost forms stripes. Also uh, neglected to mention, I guess all three of the brown warblers have these very bright uh, pink legs, but it, particularly the, the oven bird and the worm-eating warbler have these bright pink legs. Um, and this rufous cap on the oven bird. Our northern water thrush, which hangs out in these uh, hardwood swamps with slow, dirty type water. Um, not actually dirty. Um, it's not. It doesn't have like pollution necessarily, but it's 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 not great water. Uh, as a consequence, we'll say has this dirty colored throat and a dirty colored uh, br uh, eyebrow, the supercilium. The Louisiana water thrush, in contrast, has a nice clean throat and a nice white supercilium. And the worm-eating warbler has this rich caramel-colored head and breast with uh, stripes across the head. And to review the songs, our oven bird says, teacher, 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 teacher. Our northern water thrush says something along the lines of spit, spit, choo, choo, swallow, swallow. And our Louisiana water thrush has a rich uh, song starting with several clear introductory notes that sound something along the lines of cheer, 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 how about you? Finally, our worm-eating warbler has a, a dry insect-like trill very similar to the chipping sparrow. Okay. So the next group we're going to talk about, uh, with, which I believe there are four birds in this group as well, are the yellow warblers with gray heads. And uh, when I was first getting into birds, I had some trouble with some of these. Um, they're not often thought of as uh, a group, as I have them lumped here. Uh, so hopefully this will be helpful to you guys. The first bird in this group is the Nashville warbler. It has a complete white eye ring, and unlike the other birds in this uh, yellow warbler with gray head group, it has a yellow throat, so that tends to be pretty helpful. Um, we also see that occasionally um, on, on the male, which is shown here on the left, you can get a glimpse of the cap, which they have a chestnut uh, uh, top to the, the head here. The species has this very acute tipped bill, just like the golden-winged warbler, um, but obviously uh, many other differences in general. Um, the female, uh, and this will be a trend we'll see with many of these birds, uh, note from here on out, females tend to look different than males. Um, the female is just a muted version of the male, so we've got a complete white eye ring, this gray hood, some yellow wash to the throat, and otherwise just kind of a grayish uh, green, or excuse me, yellowish olivish uh, body color. The song is also uh, pretty easy. It says, see but see but see but see 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 see. This song can also vary uh, in pitch uh, and rhythm, but it tends to have the same structure, the C bit C bit C bit C T T T T. Here's another bird. That one lacks the second half entirely. What's more typical would be a bird like this. Okay, the next bird in this group is the morning warbler. The morning warbler is uh, predominantly found in the Great Lakes, though we have them in the Appalachians. Uh, again, we have this pattern of a, a yellow body color with a gray head, but the morning warbler has a couple things that make it distinctive. First of all, uh, the next warbler will have the same, but both this one and the Connecticut have very bright pink feet and a pink bill. So those are pretty distinctive. 
Uh, but on the male, we never have an eye ring. In fact, we have this kind of dark colored uh, eye uh, and a dark uh, throat patch. This throat color can be um, variable. So this can sometimes be gray with sort of a bib here of black or, or birds can be uh, distinctive like this one with a, a, really an entirely black throat. In any case, we've got this kind of dark color to the face and this dark throat. Makes you think like uh, uh, this bird is, is sad or mourning in some way. Maybe it's got on a dark makeup uh, or whatever. Um, the female is, is quite different than the male. We still have the same pattern. Uh, but one thing to note is we do have an eye ring here. Now this is going to become tricky because the Connecticut warbler female also has an eye ring. But notice that here where the, uh, the eye ring crosses with this, this eye line, we have essentially a broken eye ring uh, formed here. So rarely do you have a, a complete eye ring on a, a female morning warbler. I intentionally picked a very dull, kind of tricky one. Many females often have no eye ring at all uh, and will look more or less just like a muted version of the male. The song for the morning warbler is uh, pretty easy. It tends to be a very, very rich treat, 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 treat. And here's another bird. Okay, the next bird in this group uh, is a fairly uncommon bird, but probably a, a good one to know. Um, the Connecticut warbler, uh, just like the morning warbler, uh, has kind of this, this gray head, yellow body mixture that the last birds that we talked about uh, also have. Um, and we also occasionally have this black bib here, not as extensive as on the morning warbler. And also notice that on the male Connecticut warbler, um, we have a complete white eye ring. We didn't see a complete white eye ring in, in either of the two birds we just discussed. The last bird that we discussed with a complete white eye ring was the Nashville warbler, which as you recall, has a yellow throat. So we have a complete white eye ring. Um, we have a gray hood, a slight blackish uh, brush to the base of the, the hood, uh, and these bright pink feet telling us that we have a, a Connecticut warbler on our hands. This picture is also included uh, because the species often spends a lot of time just walking across the ground, uh, just like an oven bird will. Here's a very, very dull female Connecticut warbler. Um, one thing to note here is even though it can maybe look like a, a, a female morning warbler, the eye ring is very complete and almost has this like sort of flappy look to it. It almost looks like you could like peel it off because it's just this juicy like huge white eye ring. And even if it's not white, maybe it's a, a yellow eye ring, it's still quite large and quite obvious. And almost to me has like a flappy uh, look to it. The song of the Connecticut warbler is also very distinctive, uh, a, a type of tipu tapu tipu tapu tipu. And notice that it has a very snappy quality to it. Here's another individual. And another. Okay, so there are only three of these, these such yellow warblers with the gray hoods. So let's review. We have the Nashville warbler here, which has a yellow throat, unlike the rest of the, the three. It has a complete white eye ring um, and otherwise this kind of yellowish body color. The female looks just like the male, the same, the yellow throat, complete white eye ring, but with uh, less uh, bold colors. The male also has this kind of a uh, rusty cap, uh, but it's not always visible. The morning warbler has this very distinctive black kind of bib. The Connecticut can also sometimes have that, but we don't have any kind of eye ring on the male morning warbler. The female morning warbler uh, looks somewhat uh, like the other uh, gray hooded uh, yellow warblers, but her eye ring is incomplete. Um, this is a, a particularly tricky uh, female as well. Most females or many females don't have any kind of eye ring at all. Uh, this one has a, a broken eye ring uh, telling us that it's a, a morning warbler. Uh, uh, the Nashville and the Connecticut uh, female has a complete eye ring. The Connecticut male 
has this gray hood just like the others. The throat is gray just like the morning but different than the Nashville and a complete white eye ring. The Connecticut warbler female again is, is similar to the morning warbler female but tends to have this big uh, eye ring uh, to it. Um, okay so in reviewing of the songs our Nashville warbler has that see but see we see but see dee 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 dee. Our morning warbler has the cheree 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 cheree. And finally, our Connecticut warbler has the very snappy tipu tapu tipu tapu tipu. Okay, our next group are the yellow colored warblers uh, without black streaks. Um, I'm trying my best to lump these birds into to groups that seem uh, kind of sensible to me. So uh, uh, bear with me on that, uh, on that. The first of these birds is the yellow warbler. Uh, this is actually one of the birds that got me interested in birding. Uh, an absolutely beautiful bird. Uh, overall, we just have a bird that's pretty darn yellow. Uh, we've got the female here on the right. Uh, the male is very yellow. Uh, one thing that makes the male distinctive is we've got these chestnut colored streaks uh, throughout the, the breast on most birds. Some males will have very uh, bright uh, colored streaks. Others will be a little bit more fine. Um, the face and head really have uh, no markings to them uh, to speak of. Um, very uh, slight darkening of the, the, the yellow to almost a greenish color on the back. Um, and this is especially true for the female. But on both birds, we don't really have much of an eye ring going on. We just have a gray, uh, excuse me, a clean uh, yellow bird with a male showing this, uh, these chestnut streaks. The song is also not too tricky. Uh, the mnemonic that I learned for it was a sweet, 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 little more sweet. And here's a, a variation on that. So notice there is a lot of variation. Uh, the song that tends to be considered the classic song that's the easiest to identify is that sweet, 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 little more sweet. But beware uh, individuals that can sound a little trickier like this one, uh, which resembles almost more like a chestnut-sided warbler. Okay, so the next yellow warbler without black streaks is the Wilson's warbler. So the Wilson's warbler is pretty straightforward. Uh, it looks in many ways very similar to the yellow warbler. Um, it has more green on the back, uh, and the males never uh, wear those, those chestnut-colored breasts uh, streaks. But uh, uh, the male has a very dark black cap, and the female also kind of has the shadow of a black cap. Uh, I also have an arrow pointing here because uh, it can be helpful. The females are kind of drab and could maybe look like a yellow warbler. One thing that helps me is I also uh, I often see Wilson's warblers appear to have this like fat, bulgy forehead, uh, and that can be helpful on females. Um, we only see Wilson's warblers during migration, so uh, because this study is a breeding season study, we're hoping not to see too many Wilson's warblers just in general. Um, but uh, just in case you do encounter one. Uh, the song also is a set of even staccato notes that sound like they're running out of steam at the end of the song. Here's a male Wilson's warbler. And another. And a different male. Okay, uh, the Kentucky Warbler uh, is another one of these yellow warblers without black streaks that uh, we don't tend to see that much, but it's a beautiful warbler, uh, and we had a number of them on point counts in, in the past couple years. Uh, the Kentucky Warbler is mostly restricted to our southern Appalachian sites, um, and the male is, uh, is distinctive in pretty much every way. Uh, we have this kind of facial pattern, uh, almost like a mime uh, teardrop type pattern, a black cap. Uh, contrasting with this bright yellow supercilium and this bright yellow throat. 
The female also bears the same pattern as the male, but uh, again, everything just tends to be a little bit muted. Um, bright pink legs, like many of the other warblers, but not all of them. Uh, and the song is a very rich, uh, pretty, 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 uh, in some ways sounding uh, similar in tone and quality to that of the morning warbler. And here's another male. I personally think that the Kentucky Warbler sounds in many ways like a Cardinal or a Carolina Wren. So beware those two comparisons. Uh, okay, two more uh, yellow warblers without black streaks. Uh, the second to last one here is the hooded warbler. This species is again restricted primarily to the southern Appalachian sites. Uh, very distinctive bird. We don't need to spend much time on it. Uh, it's a yellow warbler uh, with a black hood. The female is where you get things that are a little more tricky. Uh, this is fairly typical for a female here. We have this sort of uh, a ghost hood. You can see this kind of grayish colored hood uh, with the white face as or the yellow face as we're used to. Others that are uh, even easier like this one have a, a pretty distinctive hood, even some black coming in on the edge. Whereas others, uh, in contrast, like this one, are even trickier. But still notice that we have a, a bit of a faint color to the hood. And one thing that sounds like it's not helpful, but it actually tends to be, is that the species has a humongous eye. Uh, and the very large eyes, um, the species hunts uh, aerial insects uh, often, um, in my opinion, makes that a, uh, a good field mark. Uh, so the song is also quite easy for the hooded warbler. It's a very uh, loud, rich, weeda weeda weedy yo. And here's another. Okay, the final bird in this group is the pine warbler. Admittedly, it's a strange one for this group. Uh, the pine warbler is a little bit streaky, um, and it's not always uh, that yellow like this female here. Um, but it doesn't fit in anywhere else really well in the warbler's group, so I threw it in here. Um, the pine warbler has this kind of overall yellow plumage, for the male anyway, uh, with yellow spectacles. In fact, it almost resembles a yellow-throated vireo uh, more than another warbler. We see we've got a very acute-tipped bill, um, or at least a, a skinny bill that does not have a hook on it, uh, unlike a vireo, so that should uh, be helpful. The species has these kind of grayish colored wings with white wing bars. Um, none of the other yellow birds, yellow warblers we just talked about, um, have the white wing bars. This uh, light colored belly and undertail coverts uh, make the species quite distinctive. The females can be tricky, um, but essentially we've got a muted version of the male. We've still got this gray colored wing with white wing bars and kind of a warm yellowish olive colored body. This is a very, very dull female here. Um, not exactly typical. The habitat can be very helpful though. These guys, uh, true to their name, pretty much hang out in pines. Um, in my opinion, they also have a pretty thick bill as far as uh, neotropical warblers go, a nice thick bill. Um, for a warbler hanging out mostly in pine trees. The, the song is quite distinctive. It's a very bubbly musical trill, uh, pretty much always given from pine trees, um, and can be similar to the dark-eyed junco, uh, but not many other warblers. Here's a singing male pine warbler. Notice that it has a bubbly, almost belly tone to it. And here's another male. Okay, if a review of our yellow warblers without black streaks. On this slide, you'll notice that I put uh, the females of all the species we just discussed. The reason I did that is because the males are quite distinctive, and this will help us kind of get through the, the trickiest uh, possible examples here. So first we have a hooded warbler here. Um, the hooded warbler is, is pretty distinctive, uh, but can be kind of tricky. The thing to look for is does this bird have some sort of a, a, uh, a ghost hood? And we can see that there's a, a, an obvious or, or a not so obvious but present 
hood where we've got this greenish colored head with almost, you can sort of see where the hood would go. We also have a very large eye with respect to the, the, the head itself. In contrast, we have the yellow warbler, which also tends to have more yellow in the wings uh, rather than this very greenish colored back. Um, the yellow warbler doesn't really have any kind of suggestion of a hood, uh, and the eye is quite a bit smaller in, uh, with respect to the size of the head. The Kentucky warbler is very distinctive in the facial markings, very similar to the male. Our Wilson's warbler has the suggestion of this black uh, on top of the head, um, as the male has, as well as a very distinctively swollen forehead. And our pine warbler here has the uh, gray wings with white wing bars and kind of olivey colors overall. A final review of the songs, our, our hooded warbler here, uh, note females don't sing, but uh, if it had been a male, it would produce that very uh, distinctive weeda weeda weedy yo song. Our yellow warbler, uh, the males, of course, produce a, a pretty song that sounds like they're saying, sweet, 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 little more sweet. Our Kentucky warbler uh, produces an almost cardinal-like, uh, with a rich quality, pretty, 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 pretty. Our male Wilson's warblers produce a set of staccato notes, which sound like they're running out of steam at the end. And finally, our pine warbler produces a, a rich, bubbly uh, musical trill. Okay, our next group are the yellow warblers with black streaks. Okay, the first yellow warbler with black streaks that we're going to discuss is the Canada warbler. Uh, both the male and the female are beautiful birds. Uh, we have this kind of bluish colored gray back um, on both sexes, a, a bright, a distinctive eye ring, uh, which can be white or partially uh, yellow. Uh, as well as the, probably the most distinctive feature is this black marking on the face and maybe even more so the black necklace of streaks here. Uh, really the Canada Warbler is unmistakable. It also has uh, orange legs which is somewhat unusual for a, uh, a warbler in our group here. The Canada Warbler also has a very uh, distinctive song. <clears throat> it doesn't have a, a clear structure to it uh, but it tends to be an explosive staccato burst. Uh, such as chip chip dippity dippity dip and often includes uh, at least at the very beginning a single chip so it'll start with a chip and then continue with an explosive burst of staccato notes so here's an example of a Canada warbler I'll do several and notice that chip at the beginning of the song here's another male the chip is a bit more distinctive in this one And here's one with an even more distinctive chip. Notice in any case we have a very staccato explosive song. Okay, and it's also worth notice, noting that the Canada Warbler is a bird of uh, typically very high canopy or very dense vegetation anyway. Uh, and they really like wetlands. Uh, so these like more mature uh, forest habitats with uh, a swampy kind of understory. And that's in contrast to our next bird. Our next bird, the prairie warbler, is uh, a very much a, a, an upland uh, uh, young forest habitat bird. In fact, by some it's considered to be the, the Kirtland's warbler of, uh, of non-Michigan places. Uh, in Pennsylvania, the species is quite common, but they really like uh, upland forest with uh, particularly with pine trees. We can see that it's a distinctive bird. We have this facial pattern with this kind of mustache, this black mustache and a black eye line. 
uh, and the, the muted version uh, is still present uh, on our females here. Uh, as the others, we've got streaking uh, on a yellow bird. And on the male, we even have, and this one's not very distinct, but chestnut streaks on the mantle. The song is also very distinctive. It's a, a series of buzzy notes that are flat, and they sound like they're going up a staircase. So here is the, the song of a male prairie warbler. And another male. The prairie warbler tends to be a pretty easy one for folks to identify. Okay, the next uh, yellow warbler with black streaks is the black-throated green warbler. The black-throated green warbler tends to be pretty easy to identify. Although it's in this group, its uh, underside's predominantly white with a black throat, as the name suggests, uh, and black streaks on the flank. We have this kind of greenish colored back with a yellow, uh, yellow and green facial pattern. Also this, this gray wing with white wing bars. It's a fairly distinctive species with this mix of characteristics. And notice that the female here on the right has essentially the same uh, sort of setup as the male, uh, but the, the black throat and the black streaking is somewhat uh, suppressed. The song, uh, of which there are two types, is also quite distinctive. Uh, in my opinion, it sounds like the bird is saying, trees, trees, I love trees. And it has a secondary song, which it also produces, that sounds different, but can also be fitted to the same mnemonic. So here uh, is the first song. Note, tree, tree, trees, I love trees. And then the secondary song, which can be considered a, a dawn song or the aggressive song, is buzzier, but still sort of fits to the trees, trees, I love trees. I also don't expect you guys to know this, but uh, if you're curious, they also often produce this double chip, which is very distinctive. Okay, the last bird in our yellow warblers with black streaks group is the magnolia warbler. The male magnolia warbler is very distinctive. We have either some slight streaking or an entire black mantle on the male, a white supercilium, this black kind of mask like a golden wing, uh, a yellow throat with black streaking on the breast, a white wing panel. This bird is, is, is one of the most beautiful wood warblers in our, in our north woods. The female magnolia warbler, I picked the plainest uh, I could find, is a, essentially this muted version of the male. Uh, they can be quite tricky um, in some cases, but we'd still have these, this streaking on the breast uh, and this kind of grayish colored head um, and these white wing bars on the wing. It's a pretty distinctive uh, bird. They usually are more similar to the male than this particular bird. This is, I think, actually a fall bird. Um, but notice that you can occasionally see females. Uh, males tend to be what you see and uh, definitely are what you hear. Now the song of the Magnolia Warbler is a little bit more complicated. It's very soft and very weak, uh, in spite of the fact that this bird is a very powerful and beautiful bird. Um, the song is pretty pretty weak. Um, in fact, the, pr the song that I hear the most, it tends to sound like a wee da wee da wee dee like a soft, wimpier version of the hooded warbler. So remember the hooded warbler has that rich wheedah wheedah wheedio. This guy has a, a weaker wheedah wheedah wheedee. Here's an example of a singing magnolia warbler. And a variant on that song which has less structure but similar uh, uh, notes quality to them would be this male. Okay, a final review of our yellow warblers with black streaks. We have the Canada warbler, which is gray above, uh, yellow below, with a, a black ring uh, of streaks. Again, the females are shown here to kind of emphasize these points, uh, with orange legs. 
Uh, and the Canada Warbler produces a staccato set of notes that usually start with a chip uh, sounding like this and then an explosive burst. Our Prairie Warbler, which tends to be uh, overall yellow with green back uh, and black streaking in this distinctive facial pattern, the male sings a buzzy, uh, flat set of notes that sound like they're ascending up a staircase. The black-throated green warbler is white below with streaking. Males have a black throat, as the name suggests. Females do not. Um, but they still have this kind of this gray wing with a green back uh, and a facial pattern. The male sings two different songs, both of which can sound like the bird is saying, trees, trees, I love trees. Here's the aggressive dawn song. And the, the primary song here. And finally, we have our magnolia warbler, which is yellow below, um, but gray above. Males are much more brightly colored, but in any case, we've got this gray wing with white wing bars. Uh, uh, faint streaking on the flanks uh, and an overall gray head. The males uh, sing a song, uh, several different songs, but some of those songs can sound like a wimpier version of the weeda weeda weedio we heard in the hooded warbler, but can also uh, vary from that uh, quite a bit. Here's another male and another male. Okay, moving along to our next group, the blue warblers. The next warbler uh, is a very easy one, the black-throated blue warbler. Uh, the name uh, pretty much says it all. We have a blue warbler um, that has a black face and throat, as well as a black uh, flank. The belly and breast are bright white. And perhaps the most distinctive thing um, about uh, the species in general, wh whether it be male or female, is not clearly or, or not obviously noticed on the male. And that's this, this white wing panel, often referred to as a wing window. Because the female, which looks actually quite different than the male, still uh, bears this white wing window. And no other wood warbler uh, resembles this bird, uh, or at least has the white wing window. We often see little hints of blue as well on the tail. Uh, perhaps in the wing coverts and even sometimes uh, uh, elsewhere, kind of this greenish, maybe even a hint of blue to that. The song is also very distinctive, a beer, 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 bee. Here's another male. probably also worth noting that the black-throated blue warbler tends to be an understory species of uh, heath-type habitats. The next in our blue warbler group is the cerulean warbler, a species of mature uh, forest, and this guy hangs out mostly in the canopy. A very distinctive bird, uh, blue over, uh, overall, and uh, on the upper parts the bird is pretty much entirely blue. The wings are blue with some with some black streaking as well, uh, with white wing bars, and we also have this necklace of uh, blue streaks, blue and black streaks, very similar to what we saw with uh, uh, the Canada Warbler. The throat is distinctly white, more or less in the same place where we would have black uh, in our Golden Winged Warbler. Um, the females can be a little bit tricky, but they tend to be this aqua blue color above, uh, again with the white wing bars and the faint streaking on the breast. Um, this is an example of, of, of one such female. I've, I'm not even sure I've ever seen a female cerulean warbler up close, maybe only once or twice. Uh, but they still do tend to have kind of a bluish color uh, in the same muted pattern uh, or, or muted version of the same pattern that we saw in the male. The song is also pretty easy. It's louder than the black-throated blue, um, but has a very similar uh, structure. I think of it as sounding like it's saying, beer, 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 bee. So instead of that last note being a single beer, beer, bee, like with the black throated blue, we have a beer, 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 bee, stuttered final note. Here's the cerulean warbler. And here's another male.
That final stuttering of the note uh, at the end is distinctive. Here's a black-throated blue for comparison. Okay, the next bird in our blue warbler group is the northern perula. The northern perula is pretty easy. Um, it's the only warbler that I'm aware of that has both a yellow throat uh, and a yellow uh, a mandible which is a very distinctive uh, set of traits. It's also got a dark band across the breast, uh, as well as a yellow breast with chestnut speckling. These unique set of characteristics, along with the blue uh, upper parts, white wing bars, and this green uh, triangle on the back, when you see it at a certain angle, this one shows it better, it's more like a triangular shape, um, make the Northern Perula a very distinctive uh, species. They don't breed in very many of our sites, although they do occur uh, semi-regularly. The song is also very easy because it's a, a buzzy building trill which terminates abruptly at the end. So here's a typical Northern Perula song. Also note, when looking at the bird, I forgot to mention these, these eye arcs are very distinctive. Um, but back to the song, we have a building uh, trill which terminates at the end. Here's another building trill, a variant of that song that does not terminate at the end, uh, but it still builds until it ends. It doesn't have that terminating note. But again, here's the typical Perula song. Okay, the final warbler in our blue warbler group is the yellow rumped warbler. The yellow warbler, whether it be a or yellow rumped warbler, whether it be a male like this one or a female like this one, is pretty distinctive. We have a white throat with a dark colored mask. The female has the same, except the mask in this individual tends to be a grayish brown. A white supercilium uh, with a, a sort of dark colored head. Same is true with the female. Uh, on either sex, we're going to have yellow on top of the head. This bird has just a tiny blush of yellow on top of the head. Uh, perhaps the two most distinctive color patches on this guy is this yellow uh, armpit here, seen clearly on the female and the male, as well as a yellow rump, which is where the, the species gets its, its uh, common name, as well as its nickname, the butterbutt. Uh, the bird, uh, at least the male, tends to be uh, bluish overall. Females tend to be somewhat bluish with brown mixed in. Um, they don't breed in a huge number of our uh, field sites, but they do move through during migration in uh, large numbers. So it's worth uh, noting uh, or knowing how to identify this species. Um, the yellow rumped warbler sings a song that's a composition of two trills. Uh, one is rising and one is falling, um, and that's given in either order. So it can be a rising trill and then a falling trill, or a falling trill and then a rising trill. So here are some examples of yellow rumped warbler songs. That one rises and then falls. Here's another example. Again, rising and then falling. I don't expect you guys to know the chip note of the yell rumped warbler, but it's probably also worth playing. It's a very husky chip type call. It's very distinctive, particularly in the winter, uh, as this is the only warbler that uh, overwinters in, in the northern part of the U.S. in any capacity. Okay, a final review of our blue warblers. Uh, we have the female shown here. The yellow rumped warbler uh, has this distinctive yellow armpit area, as well as a yellow rump, which is shown occasionally. The male song tends to be two trills, either a rising trill and a falling trill, or the opposite. Here's the yellow rumped warbler's song. The northern perula is a very distinctive bird. We have these white eye arcs, the yellow throat and breast with a yellow mandible, uh, as well as the blue back with this green triangle. The male song is a building trill which terminates at the end. The black-throated blue warbler 
While the male uh, looks much more distinctive than the female, the male tends to be this blue color on the top with the black throat and black flank, uh, both the male and the female show this white wing window. Um, and the male, when it sings, produces a husky beer, 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 bee. Finally, our cerulean warbler here uh, tends to show this kind of aqua bluish green top. Uh, the colored uh, auriculars with a light supercilium of white throat and a light undersides with a faint bluish streaking. Male cerulean warblers, which hang out mostly in the canopy of mature forest, sing a beer, 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 bee, similar to the black throated blue with a stuttered terminal note. Okay, on to our next group, the non-colorful warblers. The first non-colorful warbler is a very distinctive bird, the black and white warbler. Uh, it's, it's fairly unmistakable. We've got dark colored wings with uh, white wing bars on either sex. We've got a male here and a female here. Uh, black streaking on the flank of either sex uh, and a black cap and black streaking on the mantle for both, uh, both sex. On the male, we have a black mask, almost like a golden wing, uh, save for this distinctive white wing or, or white eye ring. The female has only a sort of an, an ear patch around the back of the auriculars, with the throat uh, and auricular uh, being largely uncolored. The male, in contrast, has a black throat uh, and again that black mask. Um, the species is also pretty distinctive in the way that it moves. It tends to forage along uh, sticks and even on tree trunks like a white-breasted nuthatch. The song is very distinctive. It's a high-pitched, uh, rolling, wheezy, 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 almost like a squeaky wheel going around and around. And here's another male. Okay, our next non-colorful warbler is the black pole warbler. Despite not being colorful, the black pole warbler is a, another pretty distinctive bird. For one, uh, our males have very uh, bright yellow legs uh, and kind of a yellowish color to the beak uh, much of the time. We also have a, a black cap, which pretty much uh, this solid black cap is restricted to the black pole warbler. Um, overall kind of white uh, with streaky colors and an olive colored back. Uh, quite different than our black and white warbler, but otherwise a very much uh, bi-colored bird for the most part. These yellow legs are very distinctive. Uh, females bear uh, somewhat of a resemblance to the male, um, but uh, again, they're, they're pretty much like nothing else. We've got the streaky black and white colored bird. Uh, it's clearly not a black and white warbler. We don't have a black cap. We don't have kind of that that long decurved bill uh, or the foraging behavior, as well as we do indeed have these orange legs. Um, the black pole warbler also has a very uh, distinctive uh, song. The song of the black pole warbler is a staccato set of high pitched notes with a crescendo, a, a building right in the center. So they, they start off kind of weak, they get built uh, into a very strong song, and then it tapers off at the end. So listen for that central crescendo in a very high-pitched song. Here's another male. And another. Okay, our final of the non-colorful warblers is the Tennessee warbler. Although the Tennessee warbler isn't very colorful, uh, it's also fairly distinctive. For one, we've got uh, just generally a gray warbler with no markings to it, and, and that's found on pretty much none of the warblers. The female is pretty much a yellowy olive with no markings of any kind, and that again also is very distinctive. The only real markings that I ever notice on the Tennessee warbler are very subtle uh, eye arcs, um, a light colored supercilium, and a light colored throat, but otherwise it's kind of just gray. One thing that's distinctive, however, about the male is it's gray with a green back. The female tends to be overall the same green color, but uh, still quite a distinctive bird. The song is also very distinctive. 
Uh, some years we hear a lot of Tennessee warblers uh, because of their, the way their migration works out with respect to the migration of other birds. Uh, other times they've already passed by the time we begin our surveys. Um, but if you do hear them, it's a very distinctive three-parted song. And here's another male. Okay, our final warbler group, uh, we're getting close to being done here, are what I call the distinctive warblers. We can essentially think of this distinctive warblers group as kind of a grab bag of any warblers I couldn't really fit in uh, into a group uh, that we've already covered. So without further ado, the distinctive warblers. So we begin our distinctive warbler group with the common yellowthroat. Uh, as you can see, quite distinctive, uh, as the name suggests. This bird is kind of an olive brown overall, somewhat similar to the oven bird uh, in that sense. We've got a brown uh, nape with a black mask bordered by white on one side and a yellow throat. The female also bears this yellow throat, uh, but is otherwise quite drab. But they pretty much always have this yellow throat, uh, which makes identification quite uh, quite easy. So I learned the song of the common yellow throat to sound like the bird is saying, witchity, 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 witchity. Here's another male. But one of my advisors likes to compare the common yellowthroat because it has this little black mask to a, a little bank robber who likes to ask for more money, more money, more money. The species also has a very distinctive call note, a thick chat, chat, which they produce often. When they're agitated, they also produce a, an extended dry chatter call. Okay, the next bird in our uh, distinctive warblers group is the chestnut-sided warbler. Uh, again, doesn't need a whole lot of identification uh, uh, clues here. The chestnut-sided warbler has these this kind of greenish colored overall back with a, a cream colored wing bar. This yellow cap actually makes them resemble in some ways a golden wing warbler, especially coupled with dark facial markings. Uh, but we have kind of a partial black mask with this, this sort of teardrop area, which bleeds down into a chestnut side. The female uh, resembles the male in, in basically all these ways, except a muted uh, version. And the chestnut flank is far less extensive. The song is also one of my favorites. Um, it sounds very much like the bird is saying, please, 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 please to meet you. But beware the, uh, the less common bird that can sound very similar, the yellow warbler. It's probably also worth noting that the chestnut-sided warbler is one of the most common warblers we encounter, as is the common yellowthroat, which we just discussed. The American redstart is a very distinctive bird uh, from a plumage perspective. The male has this black hood uh, and black back with black wings and a black tail um, with this these orange patches on the wings, orange squares on the tail, and orange flanks uh, on the side. The female is essentially a muted down version of the male, um, again with these orange flanks uh, and orange on the tail, uh, but lighter uh, colorations of all of those. Where the American Red Start uh, becomes tricky are the many, many types of songs that it produces. The thing that I struggled with when I was first learning my warblers, and you may struggle with as well, is, is how many different types of songs red starts can produce. Uh, one very common song type is one that builds uh, with some clear uh, whistles and then terminates suddenly. Here's an example of that. And here's another example of that same type of song. 
But also note that this bird is, is highly variable in the songs that it can produce. Here's a, another type of song, which actually sounds in some ways like a black and white warbler. This song uh, you could maybe classify as a wheezy, 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 wee. But notice that it's it's much shorter than a black and white warbler, which would be more of a wheezy, 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 wheezy. There, here's another example of an American Red Star. And another. In general, a, a normal clear whistle from a, an unidentified warbler uh, can often be attributed to the, the American Red Start. The final uh, bird in our distinctive warblers group is the Black Burnian Warbler. The Black Burnian Warbler is, is a favorite of many birders. Uh, it has this very flame colored head, uh, both the male and the female this distinctively beautiful black face markings with a black cap, uh, again, mirrored by the female, but muted in some ways, as well as dark upper parts with uh, white wing bars or wing panels on the male. We also have uh, black streaking on the flank of both male and the female um, to produce an all around uh, beautiful bird. One thing to note about the Black Burnian is it also has pretty tricky songs, but fortunately, all of the songs are very high pitched. One song that it produces sounds somewhat like the Cerulean Warbler in that it's a beer, 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 bee, but much higher pitched. Here's an example of such a song, and note how much higher pitched than it is uh, really compared to anything we've talked about. Here's another Blackburnian male producing a different song. Notice the extremely high-pitched uh, ending on the note, but it's quite variable still, much like the red start. So our red star and our black burning are two that we want to be a little careful of because they're so variable. But uh, notice general patterns, um, high-pitched notes in the Black Burnian. The Red Start has a few different uh, uh, main songs that it uses, and when it deviates, they tend to be short little blurbs. Okay, so we have one final uh, warbler in our warblers group. And our final warbler is the Yellow-Breasted Chat. The Yellow-Breasted Chat is really uh, not like the other warblers in any way. In fact, it doesn't look like a warbler, it doesn't act like a warbler, it doesn't sound like a warbler. Um, but taxonomists have, have come to the conclusion uh, numerous times that indeed it uh, shares a common ancestor with other warblers. Uh, and for that reason, I've included it here. The Yellow-Breasted Chat, uh, again, as I just said, doesn't sound like the other warblers. Uh, the song sounds like a mimid. In fact, uh, it's believed to mimic the songs of other birds. Um, and what it does is it produces uh, mimid phrases with long, sort of awkward sounding pauses uh, in between them. Here's an example of a singing yellow-breasted chat. Notice the notes that are sort of stolen from other birds' songs with long pauses. Here's an example of another male. In fact, you might even be tempted to confuse the yellow-breasted chat with a mockingbird. However, the long, strange pauses in between the phrases tells you that it's not a mockingbird. The call note of the yellow-breasted chat is also very distinctive. It's an electric sounding ow, ow. Okay, well that concludes our, our Warblers installment of the Seep Avian, tra Avian Training video series. Uh, be sure to watch this video multiple times, even though it's quite long, uh, an hour and 20 minutes or whatever. Um, 
but if you need to watch it many times to to kind of brush up please do so and also remember to uh to email me dj mcneil uh if you have any questions about anything you saw in this video um good luck with your studying and uh remember that there's no substitute for time in the field and uh get out and uh look for these birds uh while you still can and um good luck